Plague's Tale Innocence. Honestly, this game really came out of left field, honestly. Like, I heard nothing about this game. And honestly, I came across it because I think last month it was free on PS Plus. And I, I was in the mood to try something new instead of like the new mainstream stuff that's come out recently. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give this game a try. I'm gonna see how this game is. Like, see if PlayStation has improved on like the free games they give. Because I know sometimes the free games that they give us each month on the PS Plus aren't the greatest at times. But I'm happy to say that this is a hidden gem that I had no idea existed. Honestly, after playing this, I had to do research on this because I was super impressed on this entire game. And turns out this game is really praised among the community. And I could see why it was highly praised because this game was absolutely fantastic. In A Plague's Tale Innocence, this takes place during the Black Plague, and we play as Amicia, a young girl who is from a noble family, and in this game, Amicia really does spend a lot of time away from her family, and turns out her brother, Hugo, has a strange sickness, and the day that Hugo and Amicia reunite, turns out that the Spanish Inquisition are looking for Hugo and destroy her little village, her little town that she lives in. And now it's up to Amicia and Hugo to basically find out why the Inquisition destroyed her home and find out why the Inquisition is after Hugo. Like there's this like little mark on Hugo's neck and they're trying to find out why Hugo is so special. First off, the game like visually was stunning. I was I did not expect this game to look so beautiful as it is because after I did some research this game is $40 and I was like oh this can't be like a, like a triple-a game but like the environments look very detailed it looked very very beautiful and honestly it was a pleasant surprise to see that even though like not even the triple-a companies are going out of their way to put enough detail into these environments because i was astonished on how beautiful the environments are sure the character models and like the motion capture isn't the greatest but the environments themselves and the detail they put into it makes up for it a lot like to the villages, to the open areas, even the battlefields that Amicia and Hugo end up traveling through because this takes place during a time of war as well. So you see like these countless like bodies everywhere, like a field of freaking bodies, like the amount of destruction that even though the war is going on alongside the Black Plague and you go to a village where like it's, it's just destroyed by the Black Plague, everything is separated. You see the white X's indicating where people are sick. There's just a lot of detail that went into this, but as I mentioned before, the character models don't look the greatest when they're like talking and stuff, but I feel like on their own they look pretty good uh, nonetheless. But even though like the character models and like the motion capture wasn't the greatest, it made up for it with its story and its gameplay. This is a survival horror game, so honestly, I wasn't expecting like in crazy movement like in other games. And recently, I played Returnal, so I was like, exp like experience like the really high movement stuff. But in this one, you don't get that because this is a survival, survival horror game, so you're limited in mobility, it, as a on purpose for you to just become a little bit more cautious. It creates more tension because you can't move as well, so you have to be more precise on your movements overall. And most of this game is stealth based and I was honestly I was really impressed on the stealth overall because the enemies are actually really really smart. Like I was super surprised on how attentive, attentive and how smart the enemies are. Because even if you peek like the slightest bit and you're in the line of sight of an enemy, they'll see you right away. Because I know some games you're like, how come they didn't see me? Like I'm pretty sure they would have saw me and in this one you get that you really have to be careful on when you move because the enemies will spot you right away and they don't go away as easily as in other games in this one they really look over to see if there's something there and in that moment you really have to move out of the line of sight because in this game it's a one-shot kill there are no health bars there are no like 
phases and, and stuff for like enemies everything is one shot kill but the best part is that even the enemies are one shot kill it's not just you and there's actually a ton of ammo and a ton of ways for you to deal with enemies there's a bunch of type of ammo that you can use and your only source of like weapons is you get a slingshot and with the sling you use rocks but there's also like this alchemy based kind of thing going on too where as the story progresses you learn how to craft more projectiles and stuff like that some of the projectiles include you have like a fire bomb that can light fires and also stun enemies there's also another one where it's like a little poison thing since it's during the time of like the spanish inquisition there's a lot of like armor and stuff that people wear and with that little poison thing you can actually get the enemies to take off their helmet so they're open for you to land a headshot with the rock and then there's other stuff like there's like a poison like potion thing that you can use that if you get caught by an enemy you can use it as like a last resort if you and you can't get away there's other stuff like there's like a light bomb kind of thing that you can use and there's just like other stuff like this that you can basically use in your arsenal for you to maneuver around the areas and there's also stuff that you can use like there's like a pot that you can use to distract the enemies you can use the environment like sometimes there's like these little like armor places where you can throw a rock and then the enemies get distracted it's just like a lot of stuff for you to use in order to maneuver around the area aside from like managing your resources in terms of ammo and stuff your ammo and like the same resources you use to craft ammo is the same resources you do to get upgrades. Because in this game, there's actually an upgrade system for you to use at certain parts when you go to like a bench. And honestly, this added another layer of difficulty because you can either craft ammo or get a perk that'll help you in the future. Because there's like stuff where you can reload the sling faster or do two shots consecutively. There is like some that make certain projectiles last even longer. So like the fire one, it can last longer or the poison one, it lands, it lasts even longer or even like just like more uh, ammo capacity, more storage capacity, like everything is shared with the resources you collect in this world. And honestly, I really do like how it was in. in I really did like how it was, it was incorporated because it didn't feel like you had to craft ammo. It really felt like you can maybe spend some here and there on upgrades if you want to basically have a better chance overall when you're fighting enemies and stuff. Because that one where you can fire two shots consecutively and the reload is faster comes in handy a lot when the enemy is getting super, super close to you because enemies move really quickly. Because, like, Amicia is, like, a teenager, so she's not going to be, like, an athlete just, like, running faster than everyone. Like, a lot of these dudes are so grown adults, and they will basically run you down and get to you super quick. So, it was great how there's another layer of decision making where you have to sacrifice ammo in order to get better abilities and better perks as the game progresses. And also, there's another type of enemy that really does show up. And honestly, this alone made up the game. Like, this aspect literally just made the game a lot better. Since this, this is during the Black Plague, if you guys know, the rats were basically the problem. They were basically the cause of spreading the Black Plague. Because at the time, there wasn't that great of hygiene. A lot of people weren't careful on like keeping themselves hygienic keeping themselves clean so the rats are actually another enemy type but this is a game so they took the liberty of making this a little more supernatural because turns out that the rats they're man-eating rats they are like demon rats that they're per they're portrayed as demons basically where they're sensitive to light and even like in the slightest like darkness they will attack you in large numbers like sure if it's just like one rat you're fine but if it's like hundreds and honestly in this game there's a lot of time where you're like surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of rats and even in like the slightest movement you do in the dark they will come after you and they will kill you instantly 
But as I mentioned before, there are stuff and ammo for you to use. In addition of the projectiles you already have, there's another little bomb thing that grows a root out of the ground that basically allows the rats to go in a specific spot that you wanted to and then you can maneuver around them and then that light bomb I mentioned earlier if you get caught by a rat swarm and they're trying to kill you you can use the little light bomb in order to get away from them but they do cost a lot of resources so you got to be careful on when to use them and not when to not use them and it's always great when they add like a resource management kind of thing in these survival horror games because in this game survival and resource management is extremely important because you always have to make sure you have the right projectiles at the ready because sometimes you never know when you're going to run into a like a rat swarm or you're going to be in a section with a lot of enemies in this game it does that a lot it always keeps you on your toes you're always paying attention of what's around the area because at any time anything can jump out and you always have to be ready because there's only a limited amount of stuff and it's just a great way for you to feel the tension to feel that at any time and any wrong movement it'll resort in life or death because that's a lot of this game is life or death situations like even like the smallest mistake, you it will get you killed. It will. Because this happened to me a lot in this game where I take a lot of risks and then they backfire me ex like extremely easily. So you have to be very careful. And this game really does make you think. Because a lot of the time the game doesn't really give you hints on what you're supposed to do or where you're supposed to go really. You have to pay attention to the enemies. You have to pay attention to how the area is laid out and how to solve the puzzles. And in this game, the puzzles, most of them were straightforward, but I think the harder aspect was just maneuvering around enemies and stuff like that. Because you, the environment is at your disposal. You can basically jump over stuff. You can create distractions or you can just go head first and possibly get killed even faster. And honestly, in this game, you can either go all in try to kill every enemy that you see but risk losing a lot of resources or you can go completely stealth like and not kill anyone or you can do a little mixture of both which is why what i did i did a little mixture of both because in this game you can kind of play it the way you want but there's a lot of risk if you try to play a certain way and the best part is about this game you don't have to kill anyone except for like bosses and like the tutorial stuff a lot of the time you can really just play how you want if you don't want to kill someone you don't have to if you sometimes you run into like little situations where there's like a knight that's in trouble like the rats are gonna get them and there's like a light source but it doesn't have a way to light it you can save them there's another times where like there's an injured soldier and the rats are swarming him and you can light the source so you can leave him there to die and honestly there's like a lot of situations like that where you can get achievements also like sometimes you don't have to be ruthless sometimes you can actually just save people or you can just leave them to die because they destroyed your home so they're kind of pieces of shit so you can just play the way you want but there's a lot of risk in into doing certain ways but it was honestly it was a lot of fun and it was a great experience overall just playing because honestly i was glued to this game like i like the whole day i was just playing this game because i was so fascinated on gameplay and story and honestly just like just go buy this game honestly it's like it's just that good it's just it was just a great experience overall another aspect of like gameplay that i thought was really interesting it was actually crafted pretty good was sometimes you're you meet people uh, along the story and they help you out in your journey of finding the truth basically and every time you make a new companion sometimes they'll go out with you on missions in order to help you solve puzzles sometimes they'll help you take on an enemy that you may not be able to reach or they'll do it faster for you sometimes there's one person where they can't unlock stuff for you let's say there's a door but you don't have like a key or something you can tell them to pick it and they'll unlock it for you which allows you to get more resources and along the way there is a lot of stuff for your companions to help you solve puzzles because like the puzzles are very straightforward but then there's some of them that make you think and you have to rearrange of how who goes where and who does what 
but I think the only thing that really bothered me about like this whole companion gameplay aspect was Hugo himself. Because Hugo is your little brother that you haven't seen in forever. He's like five. And you know, kids, they don't like being alone. And in this game, they do really do use that to your advantage. And like sometimes like Hugo was a nuisance because you can tell Hugo to stay in place for you to move around. But the thing is, if you go too far away from him, he will start yelling. He will start attracting enemies. And in this game, if your companions get caught, you basically lose. So you have to be careful on when you leave Hugo or when basically you leave a lot of your companions. Because it, it is a lot of risk for you to separate from them because they can't defend themselves. You have to do it for them. And honestly, sometimes that really did get annoying because when you're trying to traverse the levels as fast as you can to get away from enemies, sometimes they're just too slow and they get spotted. And at times, I really thought that that was a bad thing. But the more I thought about it, the more it was you have to be even more careful. You have to be even be more stealth-like. You have to be even more attentive on when you move and when not to move. And it's like for enemy variety, a lot of them are pretty much the same. You fight like the same soldiers over and over again. And then the event, like sometimes you get like the knight that you need to basically like maneuver around or like you do like the poison thing, as I mentioned earlier, earlier, where you knock the helmet off and then you get the headshot. But then like a lot of the time, you're not fighting a lot of the time now that I think about it. A lot of the time you're just traversing the area, solving puzzles, and then occasionally going around and fighting enemies when you absolutely have to. And I, I think the boss fights in this game, they were really, really simple. But the thing is, they were actually set up pretty well. Like these boss, some of these boss fights, I really felt that you wanted to fight them. You wanted, there's a reason why you should fight them. And sure, they may not have like a lot of like impact and like emotionally and stuff, but it was still kind of fun because there's three boss fights and they don't give you any hints on how to beat them. You have to think about, you have to basically examine their movements. You have to examine their armor because in the first boss fight, you fight someone that has like full armor and you don't have any other projectiles. So you have to really pay attention to the detail of the armor because they, there's weak spots and you have to exploit them. And that's how it is in every single boss fight. You have to exploit the enemy because it's a one shot kill. So you have to really pay attention to your ammo. You have to pay attention to where the enemy is at all times. You have to pay attention to what weaknesses and what in around your area you can use to your advantage. But I think the boss fight at the very end kind of disappointed me a little bit because there was really nothing like special about it. There wasn't really anything like creative. It was just like dodge here, dodge here, shoot now. And then compared to the other two, you have to think about what ammo you should use and how what the enemy does. You have to think about how they move. You have to really... you. It was just better the other boss fights because they actually made you think. They actually made you really consider a lot of your decisions. But in the last one, you kind of just have to just dodge all the time. And then you're on, they're only open like once and you're like, oh, I can shoot now. But then the other time you're just running around basically just dodging everything. But overall, I think the boss fights were all right because this is survival horror games. They're not really like great boss fights and not really like super creative because you can't really move around so there's not really much for you to do but overall I think the boss fights were fine I kind of wish there was more boss fights like a little bit more because I felt like they were too little there's too little boss fights I really felt like even though there was like very little boss fights it really did make up all of that in the story itself. I was super fascinated by the story. Sure, like the character moments kind of didn't make any sense because Amicia makes friends with these random people and like this is the Black Plague and shouldn't you be like very cautious on who you meet because anyone could be infected with the virus. And honestly, like when I was playing it, I was thinking about it. I was like, 
it was like if this is real life this wouldn't have happened like i feel like amicia wouldn't have made friends with like all these people but at the same time i was like they have nothing as well so it's better for people to stick together and like do something in order to, to survive so in that aspect i was like oh, i kind of makes sense now but at first i was like this doesn't make sense how people were so trusting of each other especially during the time period but other than that i thought some of the characters were pretty interesting amicia's mom was pretty interesting the inquisitor himself was pretty interesting like the black knight dude that you fight was pretty interesting like a lot of the characters i was really fascinated about and i wish they would have dug deeper into their backstory a little bit more but the story is pretty straightforward but like a lot of the implications and a lot of the questions that it makes you ask like why is hugo so special why does he have like this weird mark on his neck like stuff like that that just really did help the game in a lot of ways in terms of story even though the story was very straightforward and i think the best thing about this game it's its ability to keep the tension as a survival horror game because if you remember in my resident evil 8 review i felt like that game didn't do enough for the in terms of like horror it didn't do enough for me to feel scared it didn't do enough for me to basically be on my toes at all times and in this game it nails it like it turns like a rat like a little creature that you really don't think of into like a horrifying thing that can kill you at any moment if you don't pay attention and honestly and even like the knights and like the people that you fight sometimes like it it really does become stressful when you're trying to save resources when you're trying not to get spotted and honestly that really felt great throughout the entire game because this is a survival horror game and i want to feel the tension throughout almost the entire game and honestly even that points where you're supposed to be safe i really did felt like at any moment anything could have jumped out at me any like like a thing of rats would have came out of nowhere or like a random like squad of knights would have just shown up and in this game it really did keep me on my toes at all times and honestly i am super glad that they did that because in the survival horror genre i feel like it's dying out a little bit they're kind of going too much into action stuff but in this game it really just go goes back to like its initial roots of you basically maneuvering around spaces being attentive being aware at all times and being possibly scared because i remember the first time when i ran into the rats i was actually kind of scared because like when you first like they were first introduced they rip apart a freaking dude like they rip him apart and you see them eating him and you're like yeah i don't want to be near that i don't want to be near that so it was just great that they're able to imp- like basically incorporate a lot of the survival horror elements aside from its great movement its great resource management and its subpar story and now it's time for me to give the final verdict for a plague's tale innocence this game really did surprise me i was super impressed in terms of its visual aspect its gameplay its story and its overall attention to detail and its attention to basically keep us on our toes throughout almost the entire experience i had no idea that this game even existed and i'm glad that i was able to play it because it was free and i've got to say even though it's $40 this game is an absolute absolutely worth it every single penny and for that i'm going to give a plex tail in a sense a 8 out of 10 this is a great game and i honestly recommend that you go out and buy this game because it was absolutely fantastic and i heard that's going there's going to be a sequel to this one a plex tail well, the sequel is going to be called A Plague's Tale Requiem that's going to come out in, tw- in 2022. And I'm super excited to see where they're going to take this because the ending kind of left off on a cliffhanger and implications to something more. And I'm super excited to see what they're going to do with this story. And hopefully this expands even further in other like 
sequels or stuff because I really want to see more from these developers. I want to see more of Amicia and Hugo overall. If you want to buy this game, it's on PlayStation, Xbox, PC. It's $40 and it's like not a AAA game, but it feels like if it was a AAA game and just go out and freaking buy this. It's freaking awesome. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, if you're on the YouTube video of this, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Or if you have any games you want to recommend to me to review, leave them out down in the comments below. Or if you're on the podcast version of this, you can message me on atcervera.guillermo. I'll leave it in the description like I do always. But I also stream here and again on Twitch. Real Rick Manica, I'll leave it in the description as well. But thank you guys for listening, and I'll see you guys next time on Did You Get the Memo. Bye bye.